a new mailbag arrived with lots of stuff from all over the world. From the United States, from India, from Switzerland, from Bulgaria and of course from China. As you see, this mailbag again has to be divided into two parts. And as usual, the safety rules at the beginning. If you do not want to spend unnecessary money, switch off immediately. This content can lead to addiction. Gritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. So let's start. So the first one comes from the United States and it comes from Kevin Dara and uh, he is a uh, quite a famous YouTuber in our field. I assume you know him. I will post a link in the description to his channel just in case you don't know him. Very well packaged, Kevin. So it's even counted. These are ESP8266 boards. Maybe you think it's nothing, nothing special if you look from this side, but here you see the title is Trick Board. I have two of them and they are quite special. This Trick Board is a very intelligent design using newest technology and the whole goal of this Trick Board is to have a sleep current of less than one microampere. But still, keeping trigger possibilities for an external trigger signal and a wake-up signal every hour or so. So this ESP8266 is not in deep sleep, it is completely switched off. And this clever hardware here makes it possible that it wakes up either each hour or when an external input is triggering this device. Let's have a quick look at his uh, diagram because I think parts of it can also be used with, uh, with our designs if we do not want to use the whole board from Kevin. And he is so kind that he gives us uh, also the diagram that we know how he did it. The trick board has a low dropout voltage regulator. This is the low dropout regulator which can deliver one ampere but it has a dropout voltage of only 130 millivolt which is quite low and it has a shutdown mode and then it uses typically only 20 nanoampere. And this is done with this chip here. This chip is one you already saw once in the mailbag. It is the TPL5111 nanopower system timer. And this timer can wake up our LDO, for example, every hour. You can choose the time from 100 milliseconds to 7200 seconds, which is, I think, if I calculate right, two hours. And it also has only 35 nanoampere typical current consumption, which is also <laughs> not a lot. So this, every hour, it kicks this LDO, the LDO powers on, and the ESP8266 boots and does its thing. And when the ESP did his thing, he just pulls this down and then the LDO is switched off. And we are again in deep, deep, deep sleep. Only below one microampere. If we want to trigger from an external source, uh, Kevin used a very sophisticated driving here uh, to get also an external switch. Either it's always open or it's always closed. Uh, both are possible. He included some jumpers here to select. If they switch, for example, a read relay or something like that, then also it switches on the LDO. And you can also read whether this was an external wake or a time awake. So very clever system. Also with the charging for the LiPo battery. 
And if we look here, we have two JST connectors. One is for the LiPo battery and the other one is for the sensor, for the external sensor. Thank you, Kevin, for providing us this interesting, uh, very, very low power setup. Of course, you can also use a ESP32 with the same thing, but then you have to do your own board. Next one. Something from Sonoff, a PIR motion detector, a door sensor. This is the interesting thing, or the one I'm most interested in, and this is an RF bridge, 433 megahertz. A small device, should work, QC passed. And it does a translation from 433 to 2.4 gigahertz. And the question here is, I think it has a firmware on it already. And uh, it says here it should work with Amazon Alexa and uh, with Google Assistant. But usually it has a cloud platform and maybe we can flash it to use it for a different purpose. That would be my goal, and these are 433 megahertz PIR sensor and a, a normal hole sensor with a battery and with a uh, with 433 megahertz transmitter, quite handy. And the whole set was quite uh, considerably cheaper than just each component. That's why I bought the whole set. This is quite a big PIR sensor. It works also on 433 megahertz. By the way, I purchased all these gadgets here from money given to me by my supporters. So this is not a gift from anybody and you get first-hand information and I do not need to follow any instructions. Next one. The first of a series, if you can read that, it is UHF, ultra high frequency. When I purchase some of the RFID stuff, of course, some of my viewers said, we want more. And they said, first, we want also the more modern UHF RFIDs, which are, by the way, this technology is way more expensive than the low frequency stuff. I said, okay, I'll do that. And this is a strap on. And here you can, this you can use, for example, to read in sports events and stuff like that, because the UHF RFID tags should be readable over a, a big distance. And uh, maybe you can also build something for elderly people a safety device or something. Next one. This reader is a UHF reader and according to the description also a writer. Now you see it doesn't have a big antenna and I assume also not a lot of power but at least for first experiments I hope it will be sufficient to learn about technology and then we still can beef our equipment up if this is uh, interesting or if we have uh, use cases for that. Next one. This is for my TS100 soldering iron. So far I used an old laptop power supply which is perfect. 19 volts is, is very good for this, uh, for this soldering iron. It works quite fast with 19 volts but uh, the laptop cable was quite stiff so I heard that these guys sell a very flexible cable and this should be much easier to solder. And really it is very flexible. I probably will not use it too much on the mobile. I will connect here my laptop power supply and I will profit from this very flexible cable here. It's much nicer to work if this cable is flexible. Next one. 
No, these are not tattoos. These are RFID tags. And they are also for UHF. They have quite big antennas here and the chip is, has to be somewhere here in the middle. So we will also try to experiment with these quite large tags here. Now one from Bulgaria. Now we found out that the Chinese are okay with packaging. From Slovakia they are extremely well and uh, the guys from Bulgaria are somehow not so good in packaging. Ah, it is not uh, defective. And this is a competitor of Sonoff. It's called Shelly. And you see the difference. It's blue. No, it's much smaller. And the idea is that you can put in this device in your switches. Now there is one issue, at least where I live, it is not allowed to connect anything directly to the installation of the house. Only uh, licensed electricians are allowed to do that and I'm also not sure what kind of certifications these devices need. Maybe it is sufficient if you have the CE certification or maybe it, you need more. And anyway, you have to check in your country if you are allowed to do it. But it is a, quite an interesting concept. It has also an input where you can connect your existing switch and you can use either or and combine scenarios, which is quite good. You could also probably use this switch for some, this input for something else. So it's available. And the second thing is you have here the flashing pins already exposed. So you do not need to open the device as it was here, as it is here. The disadvantage here definitely is it's more, more expensive. It comes also with a cloud, but uh, people who know me know that uh, I do not like these cloud solutions. I would probably use a Tasmota or something else. Next one, very good packaged. Ah, oh, now I know. It's already open. Guys who saw my last mailbag remember that I tried to work with strong infrared LEDs and also lenses and they didn't behave as expected and I did not know exactly what happened. Then uh, viewers suggested that I use a webcam and modify them to take the IR filter away and stuff like that. And that, then I remembered that you can buy um, Raspberry Pi cameras which are made for night vision, which, which work especially on infrared. I even think they have a daylight filter, so they should be perfect to monitor my infrared diode experiments. And I ordered also here two infrared LEDs which can be mounted like that uh, to uh, illuminate the whole thing. And then I can also experiment with these LEDs compared with mine. They have also a lens in front of them. So I have uh, additional uh, stuff for experiments. And also here you see it has a uh, LDR to switch it off during day and switch it on during night when there is no daylight. I'm really curious if this works as expected. Next one comes from Bosnia and Herzegovina. If you do not know where it is, here it is. This is from a viewer. These are RFID modules which work together with such a reader we saw in the last video about RFID. And you connect this reader here and here you can connect some buttons to, for management and also a relay for the key lock. And this ESP connects to the wireless network and there to a home page where you can configure the access rights of these RFID cards. 
Thank you, Vedran, and good luck for your project. In videos like that, you understand why I have to thank all my supporters on Patreon, as well as viewers using my links for their purchases for supporting the channel. Without you, it would be difficult for me to do what I do now. Bye.